Uh, excited for uh, Thursday Night Football. You know, Drews and I were just talking about, like, do we see Denver breaking the streak? They've really struggled versus KC of late. Yeah. Do we see that actually finally this being the game? Not with the defense. No, nah, not, not with the nah, way the nah. Denver defense has <laughs> played this year. Even though Russell's played all right, I just – I don't foresee that happening. Yeah, oh, well, we we'll, we'll, in totality now. Let's just we'll do it we'll, we'll, we'll get to the script. We'll get to the script. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Come let's, on, let's live, let's live a little dangerously. Yeah. Um, Travis Kelsey, I know, didn't okay. practice, I believe, Monday, but he did yesterday. And we know this, Brady, on a Thursday – Game, it's a shortened week. You don't really practice. It's a walkthrough, right? So there were some concerns that he didn't even partake in that on Monday. It's probably a vet day just to make sure that ankle was good because I know it was a low ankle sprain, they yeah. said. So I know when he came out at half versus the uh, Minnesota Vikings, I don't know what they gave him, Brady, but he's like a totally different player than after the ankle twist. Have you guys ever wondered, too, like where is the differentiating point between like a high and low ankle sprain? True. Like does it kind of <laughs> depend, Will? I mean, you seem like a guy who doesn't have calves. Does it kind of I actually, yeah. actually, actually, I have, I have probably better calves than you do. I'll be perfect. Oh. But, you know what? That might be true because I don't really pride myself on having big calves. <laughs> right, right, right. I've got great more calves. More, more, like this. more of a squat guy, not so much for really a calf raise guy, like like Will probably was back at the student rec center there. And uh, where, where were we at? Raleigh. Yeah, in Raleigh. Yeah, I, look, just, I don't have like I look, I look I've got runs up the whole the short, time. The short one, we yeah. have to put it's the like short ones go up as the calves go up. <laughs> He's getting ready to go out on the beach or whatever during the little spring break there. I got, I got great hair from my from my mom's dad, and then uh, for some reason on my dad's side of things are just calves, man. Calves like okay. look, it looks like I'm smuggling kittens over here. Okay, <laughs> where's your point of, of of differentiation between the two injuries? Because I don't really have much much of a calf, and so I kind of look at them like, well, I guess low is like somewhere where like. The start of like the gastroc or like the start of your calf. Yeah. Anything below that, and then high is kind of a little higher up somewhere in like the mid, the the mid part of your shin. Like <laughs> that's what I always want to know. Like where do you differentiate the two? I always thought it was like I always thought like an ankle sprain was like a like a normal one was kind of like a, when you rolled your ankle, and then the high ankle sprain was like when you felt like it was more of a leg than like just the pure foot and ankle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I I guess I know what you mean. Yeah, I, and it was weird. When, I mean, when you I asked the question and lost. don't know the answer. I don't know the answer either. I'm just trying to. When I saw the ankle injury live, it looked like it was more foot than do, anything. Do we know this wasn't something that happened with him and Taylor Swift? I'm just saying. Ah! One never knows. I mean, I, I, she can't dance really, though, right? Like, isn't that like kind of one of the things that she's not great at? So, like, maybe maybe it wasn't with Taylor Swift. Maybe they were doing dance lessons together and he, he slipped on something. I'm more uh, curious to see what Will thinks about that conspiracy theory. Have you heard of this? Which one? What is it? Oh, it Which was one? like a week. It's like a week old now. Yeah. But the one about how she, you know, during her tour, it's a, it's an international tour. Correct. And she's been traveling around, gallivanting in this private jet. The carbon emissions. A lot of. Oh, people I did hear about oh, that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I like this. It's, it's a private jet to go see, you know, the Jets versus Chiefs game. Well, it's not so much that. It's the fact that it's when the Google search. Google search her. Yeah. It comes up about all this bad publicity, and so how do you get rid of that? You go to a Jets game. Yeah. You put in the Taylor Swift Jets. Now it just comes up the Jets game. Yeah, so I heard, I heard about that. I don't so, know. All right, so so there's a couple of angles here. One, like before, if you search Taylor Swift Jet, all it would pop up, Taylor Swift Jets, all it would pop up was Taylor Swift ruining the, the earth or the carbon emissions yeah. from her private jets. Then for like three weeks, the only thing that popped up was Taylor Swift in the Jets game. Because like you show up in the Jets oh, game, we're like yeah. leaking out. But now the only thing, the top Google searches are, Taylor for Taylor Swift Jets are is did Taylor Swift go to the Jets game as a conspiracy to cover up her <laughs> original? Love so yeah, and I think it was have we talked about this yet on the Pick Six Pod. No, oh, there you go. So this is the content that we no! need. Yeah. We're not kidding. This is We've got some other stuff on the rundown. This is what people want to talk about. So <laughs> there's also there's a uh, I, I I think it was KFC uh, from Barstool who was talking about this. I saw it on Instagram, but he was saying that um. Apparently, uh, Disney did. Th there's a conspiracy that Disney did this too, because the only thing when you search Walt Disney Frozen before was they sent out that movie frozen was head. his yeah. frozen head, right? Well, exactly. Then, then leads you to why, if you're going to cryogenically freeze just your head instead of your entire body, body. like Ted Williams did, right? Yeah. Like, wouldn't you think that, like, all right, let's just play this out in the future. You're freezing yourself because yeah. you want to be able to live longer. Correct. If you only do your head, you're banking on the fact we're going to be, like, bionic from the neck down. <laughs> Correct. That's going to take a little longer. And he died in 66. 
you're like freezing you're, the entire it's, body. Little in different. 66, you're like, all right, yeah, we'll just freeze my head until we're able to jam heads, the human heads on robots, and everybody can walk around. Who's thinking that in 1966? Well, well, maybe he's ahead of the curve, and he knew something. Mickey Mouse. That's yeah. true. Maybe there's some technology that we're not privy of that he knew was coming oh, out. Oh, sure. You know, and he was like, you know, I'm just going to freeze my head. Like you said, we're going to put it on a bionic body, and I'll be able to walk around and live yeah, forever. Yeah, but I, I, I feel yeah. like if you want to be brought back to life, like, wouldn't you think if you're – like, Ted Williams has a much greater chance yeah. of being unfrozen and coming back <laughs> yeah. to life before Walt Disney. Like, Ted Williams would be coming back and be like, well, who else is frozen in here? Oh, we got Walt Disney's head? Well, <laughs> we're not there yet. Uh, we're going to have to figure out how to figure out the yeah. way of connecting all to the internal or everything else. My man wants to come back in year 3000 as RoboCop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is, I mean – I get you guys are the age enough where you've got like we can talk about like Demolition Man too, right? I mean, with 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 Wesley Snipes like and and so God, what you remember and like also did did anyone ever figure out how like the toilet the 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 uh, the the shells worked? Where it was oh, like for the, the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> remember yeah. he was looking for like Sylvester Stallone. He's like, "This is toilet paper." <laughs> He's, He's like, like, "We've got these two, we got three shells." I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. Doctor so, Bush was uh, telling him like, "You know how to use the shells?" He was like. What is that? Where's the toilet paper? <laughs> yeah. Remember Stallone? Stallone's like, hey, uh, he's like, he's asking Sandra Bullock. He's like, hey, uh, where's the, uh, I need, you know, look, I need some toilet paper. I'm going to use the bathroom. You remember, this part? remember he started, if you cuss, you got a ticket. Remember oh, he started yeah. cussing to use it as toilet paper. Yeah, that's wow. right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah that's that right. Yeah. I haven't seen it a long time. That's, that's a good memory. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's one thing I do have, my, my dad, which is probably not great that I was watching this as a young kid. We both really love that movie. So every time it <laughs> came on, we watched it. Yeah. A lot of that's coming to. to um, so circling back to Thursday night football, yeah. um, <laughs> Patrick I have Mahomes a, is going to be a demolition man. Against that <laughs> Broncos defense. Exactly. Patrick Mahomes is going to be pooping in the three shells and dropping them on Sean Payton's head. Uh, <laughs> nope. Okay. Uh, I've got a th- I got a theory that for this particular game, we're not like a, not like a conspiracy or anything, just like a a theory on it. So the Chiefs host the Broncos this week. Yep. Mm-hmm. And. Then so that by the way the and and then play the Broncos again in two weeks two weeks, two weeks yep. yep I think they won't show I think that this is short week you know you got you know some limited you got Kelsey with the injury Mahomes had an ankle two, injury two weeks ago I think this is the Pacheco game like you give the ball to Isaiah Pacheco let him run loose you you don't care if you win seventeen thirteen you don't care if you win seven to three like you just want to get out of this game with nobody getting hurt and don't show them anything either because is it, is it Pacheco or Pacheco. I mean, I mean, how Pacheco. do you say it where you're from? Pacheco. Pacheco. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, well, also of of note, in between the two Broncos games, they play the Chargers. You don't want to put anything on tape for the for for those two divisional games coming up, especially with a repeat. I'm right there with you, Will. I mean, if you just look at this Denver defense, it's the worst rush defense in football. I mean, I think Brees Hall is still running right now, Brady. He went for 177 against them, right? And that was his first breakout game. So I think, honestly, while the Chiefs are kind of – it's a weird spot for them, Brady. They're kind of like trying to find their identity, right, because they don't have a number one receiver besides Travis Kelsey. So who can Patrick Mahomes really depend on? I think you're right, Will. Like, lean on Isaiah Pacheco – that's been what's what's been so great about Andy Reid and the maturation of this offense. Like we're so used to them, you know, throwing for 300, 400 yards. But we saw, you know, at times last year, they them play bully ball. Right. I think this is a game. You're right. Short week. Your offensive line is more physical than them. Also, DJ Jones, their best defensive tackle, didn't practice on Monday. He's beat up. We'll see if he's able to go. If not, he's their best D tackle stopping the run. They're already putrid at stopping the run. Why would you not really lean on Isaiah Pacheco this game? You know, it's funny. I brought this point up to Pete. You know, when you looked at the beginning of the season for the Kansas City Chiefs and outside of Kelsey, it was like, kind of like, Correct. they won't have anyone that scares me. I was like, well, they, they do. It's just he's in the backfield. It's Isaiah Pacheco. And he's like, well, what are you going to do? You got to take the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands? Yes. I go, well, there's, there's like the dump downs, check downs, screens. There's Ooh. other ways of getting Pacheco the ball that still involve the passing game. Yeah. But I also think this is like, not the maturation, but like the the development of what a dynasty has to be or become. Yeah, that the yeah. Chiefs are yeah. is their defense is playing much better, yeah, right? We really we kind of looked at them last last year. We're like, all right, can they do it with all these rookies in the secondary? Yeah, they're fine. They did it. They're playing really good football right now. They are. They now have the ability to win in a variety of ways with running the football, and so they don't have to win every game where Patrick Mahomes is a hero and wins in a shootout. Like we've already seen that version of the Chiefs. Yeah. 
Maybe this is a different version. Maybe this is a version where we see them control the game more, running the football with Pacheco, playing good defense, and not forcing Patrick Mahomes to have to extend plays, subject himself to injury, and and have to make these kind of splash plays that aren't really there anymore, at least right now in their offense. And I'll say this last thing. Their wide receiver group misses – to me, what I would consider like a center, like yeah. like in, in basketball, if you had to start five. Yeah. And I think Justin Ross, they're thinking he will be that. And and the hard thing is, is his medical history makes yeah. you concerned about his ability to consistently be that. But that's what they need. Like yeah. Juju kind of was, but I'm saying even a little a, a bigger, you know, frame than that. Someone that red zone, third down, catch Ooh. radius, contested catch, like he can make that sort of play. He's not going to separate as much, but he doesn't need to because he's got the size. So Outside of Kelsey, who they have, but he's been a little banged up. It's like you need that player. I would be curious if they were in the trade market for a guy like that to kind of evolve, or maybe Justin Ross continues to develop into that for them this year. Because look, they've been they've been the one team to take a chance on Justin Ross, despite some of the, the medical history and injuries that he sustained. Right, and, and Justin Ross has flashed a lot in the preseason and training camp. And then you know would deal with more injuries, but I mean I, I think Rishi Rice has been pretty, he's he's not a rebound type of guy, but he, right. like, no, I think I think he'll be the red zone guy because he's he's the guy that they have been going to. In I know, the red but zone. he's not like the size type. He's yeah. more stuck with speed. Well, well, he kind of matches Tony and Scott Moore. And yeah. all those well, the guy I want to bring up that Patrick Mahomes seems like he has the most trust in is Justin Watson. Watson yeah. He's been the guy that's been able to go up and get those contested jump balls and. He's a guy that they've really leaned on in big situational football because he's getting the one-on-one coverage, and he's been able to win. So I could see him taking a step this year where he becomes the Juju Smith-Schuster of this offense, the guy that if you know Travis Kelsey is double and I can't dump it down to Pacheco in the back for or McKinnon, I can go to Watson because I trust him. Right. Yeah. You can't take it out. You can't take it out of Patrick Mahomes' hands. You can't do that. <laughs> uh, just they, they, like, they, freaked out about it. I was like, my goodness, dude. Like, Tom yeah, Brady's the greatest of all time, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, they utilized Kevin Falk early in Tom Brady's yeah, career sure. pretty well out of the backfield. Well, and, and to your point, you talked about the defense, right? I don't think they're getting enough credit. Like, no, this good. team is actually led by its defense right now. I mean, the offense, again, still trying to find their identity. You talk about the young secondary, you know, whether it's Watson, McDuffie, and – but Jerry State is playing Pro Bowl football. So is uh, Trent McDuffie. Both of those guys should be on the Pro Bowl ballot. What LeJarius Sneed did against Justin Jefferson, I don't think I've seen a corner do Justin Jefferson's whole career. He got physical with him the whole game. And those guys are playing elite-level football. I mean, this defense has held teams to 17 points and under week in and week out. They, they made just enough stops against the Jets to win that game when the offense in the second half sputtered. So – it's weird to even say this, but right now this Chiefs team is led by its defense while mm-hmm. the offense is trying to find its identity. Uh, and just worth noting, too, I think that when you look at this stretch of games that the Chiefs have coming up, I mentioned first Denver versus the Chargers at Denver. Then they have uh, Miami. Is that in Germany or is that in London? It's in Germany. Germany. Yeah, that's Germany. the German game. And then the Chiefs are taking their bye after that game. I think that's probably smart just because we don't have a ton of – if any history really of like German, like ha- like traveling to Germany and then traveling back and, then, and like readjusting. I am curious to see with what's happening around the world right now, mm. if that Germany game still stays put there and if that doesn't end up being some potentially somewhere else. That's oh, that's actually, that's, that's a, that's a pretty really good, good point. point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they have, but the, after they're by, which, which won't move, I wouldn't think they have uh Philly at home and at Las Vegas. Um, I mean, and then at green Bay, Versus the Bills at home. Like, this is like a just a pretty link. You know, I mean, the, the Chiefs are f- four and one. They lost at home by one point to Detroit. Then they, you know, had that weird low scoring defensive game against Jacksonville. And then they've beaten the Bears, the Jets, and the Vikings. Like, I mean, it's it, like, I, I don't know. This is just a, this is a big stretch where the Chiefs are going to win more games than they're going to lose. Right. But I, like, I think that, I think this opening game on this Thursday night, that's just why I think we're going to see like a, I mean, take it out of Patrick Mahomes' hands. A whole lot of, a whole lot of Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, I, uh, so is the line still 10 and a half last time I looked? Ooh, last time I checked, line was 10 and a half, yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, and this is how – I don't know if we, I've talked to you about this, dudes, but like when I would place a bet in this case, because it's a big line, right, especially big for a divisional line. game yeah. on a short week, I, I always look at it and just say, all right, if I take the 10 and a half in Denver, but I, the Chiefs end up covering – I'm going to feel more like an idiot in that respect (laughs) because nothing leading up to the game was telling me that I should actually take the Broncos and the points True. So I have to lay the points in this case, (laughs) but I know I'm going to, they're going to, Denver's going to end up covering its divisional game. They're usually closer than people realize. 
and I'm still going to feel like an idiot afterwards for that reason, <laughs> yeah. but not as much for Correct. some reason. Well, if you look at it, we were talking about this before we came on air. Both of these games last year were close. Yeah. Now, the Chiefs did jump out, I believe, 27 nothing or something like that, but Denver scored 21 on answer. So you're talking about a backdoor late cover potentially yeah. happening? Yeah, I can exactly. see that happening. Because we've seen the Chiefs get lax when they have big leads. Well, we saw it versus we, Jets We've already. seen the Broncos throw Hail Marys to be able to get within exactly. striking distance. Exactly. So the, the, the late well, the backdoor I, I mean, cover is definitely in play. To, to, Brady's, to Brady's point, I think, like, if you are, if you take the Broncos and the Chiefs win by twenty, you feel like It'll an idiot. If you take the Chiefs yeah. and the Broncos, well, if you take the Chiefs, if you take the Chiefs and the Broncos through a late touchdown to backdoor cover, you're like, well, I just got snaked. I, you know, I can live with that. The mm-hmm. applied score here, by the way, twenty nine to nineteen for the uh, based on the based on the based on the models. So it, no, 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 based on based on the based on the point spread and the and the total, which is forty eight, which is pretty high for a ten and a half point. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, who you got? Who you got? This is my rationale in betting, though. So I'm going to lay the 10.5 points with Kansas City here. Uh, I fully expect them to win, but I think it probably will end up being tighter than that. However, again, you're going to lose bets, okay? You're going to lose bets. (laughs) It's conditioning yourself to cope with when you lose those bets and not feeling worse than you need to. So in this case, I'm going to lay the 10.5 points. I know if I lose, I won't feel quite as bad as I would if I take the 10 and a half Correct. points yeah. and end up losing this bet. So that's why I'm going with the Kansas city chiefs. So see cool. that's, that's spoken, that's spoken. And I don't mean this like in a, in a condescending way at all. That's spoken like a, a novice emotional better, which is a good, just a perfectly fine thing. Like I will bet, I will bet on Carolina, the Tar Heels, a team that like, like that way when they win, I f- I'm like, well, at least I didn't lose both ways. <laughs> like, like, so I'm in the same boat with you, 100. percent Dude, well, you I've got? got a lot of Italian and Irish blood in me, so clearly there's a lot of passion, a lot of emotion. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah. Ooh, I'm going back and forth. You said the number for the total is at 48 and a half. I'm, I mean, I, I think it was at 49. I don't know you're, if you're I, gonna I'm, play the over under bet. Is that what you like better? Not really, because if you look at Denver, they score a lot late, so they go over. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I believe this season they're four I mean, one. Playing overs over. is, is a lot more fun than playing under. It is. I, I'm gonna play the over okay. in this game, mm. and just looking at was it was it last Thursday was the the commanders Bears and Bears and, and Commanders. Yeah, sixty points. That game hit over oh, way over. Oh, 60, yeah, so, 60, so 60 I, I'm over. gonna say this game hits over because the Chiefs will take a, a early lead, probably go up fourteen or seventeen nothing. But then I see Denver coming back at the end and putting up a couple scores at the end. I'm going to play the over because, again, I would feel more comfortable playing the points with Kansas City for them cover the 10.5. But that's just a, such a high number. And if you look at these two games, how they played last year, Denver came back in the second half and they covered both of those. So I'm going to play the over in this game. Yeah, uh, I, I would lean towards the under. And I think, it too, it depends on the game script. This is a good game. Andy Reid games like this when he's double-digit favorites. If you're going to bet live bet anything – if he's got a double digit lead at halftime, live bet the under because or take the second half under because Andy is going to pound the football and force Russell to drop back a bunch, maybe make create some turnovers and then really slow the game down. Uh, I'll take the Broncos plus the ten and a half. Don't feel good about it. Um, feels like they're begging me to take the Broncos too, which is what I'm. Barry. Everybody had a different bet. I know. I, know. I like that. I like that. Will loves to hate himself after he makes the bet. <laughs> so <laughs> he'll literally be hitting old Jack Daniels up, just pounding the ball. Yeah. And going, nah, I knew I should have taken. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I actually, I, I know who's going to win, and I know, I know the exact score and how it's going to happen. But I want to take the wrong one that way. I have an excuse to pound bourbon. That's right, Brady. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's take a break. When we come back, fatal flaws. Various contenders next.